Rambam Mishnah Torah, one chapter a day, Kilaim, chapter three. Halacha one. There are certain species of plants which will divide into separate forms because of the difference in the place where they grow, and the differences in the manner in which the earth is cultivated, until they appear as two species. Nevertheless, since they are one species, they are not considered as kilaim with each other. Halacha two. And there are species of plants that resemble each other and whose form is close to being the same. Nevertheless, because they are two species, it is forbidden to grow them together. Halacha 3. What is implied? Lettuce with wavy lettuce, endives and wild endives, leek and wild leek, coriander and mountain coriander, mustard and Egyptian mustard, Egyptian squash and squash of ashes, are not considered as kiloin with each other. Similarly, wheat and undomesticated wheat, barley and oats, rye and spelt, beans and white peas, fabiciae and leguminosiae, white beans with the zuki beans, zucchini and cucumbers, cabbage and cauliflower, beets and sorrel are not kiloin with each other. But radishes and Israel radishes, mustard and bitter cabbage, Greek squash and Egyptian squash, or and squash of ashes, although they resemble each other, are kiloin with each other. Halacha 4. With regard to trees, there are species which resemble each other with regard to their leaves of their fr or their fruit, but since they are separate species, they are kilain. What is implied? Apples and crab apples, peaches and almonds, prunes and ar Arabian jujube, although they resemble each other, are kilain with each other, but apricots and white plums and quince and lavalet are not kilain with each other. Halacha 5. Similarly, there are other plants and trees which our sages did not classify as kilaim, although they are inherently two different species, because the leaves of one resemble the leaves of the other, or the fruit of one resembles the fruit of the other very closely, to the extent that they appear as different shades of the same species. The rationale is that with regard to kilaim, we follow the appearance alone. Halacha 6. What is implied? Turnips and radishes are not kilaim with each other because their fruits are similar. Turnips and Israeli radishes are not kilaim with each other because their leaves resemble each other, but radishes and Israeli radishes are kilaim even though their fruits resemble each other and their leaves resemble each other because the taste of the fruits are drastically different from each other. Halakha 7. How much is it necessary to separate between two species of plants so that they will not be considered as kilaim when planting them in the same field, so that the two species will look distinct from each other? If, however, they appear as if they were sewn together, this is forbidden. Halakha 8. There are many different measures given with regard to the distance required to make this distinction. Everything depends on the size of the field that is being sown and the proliferation of leaves the plants have and the extent to which their branches spread out. Halakha 9. What is implied? If a person had sown a species of grain in his field and he sought to sow another species of grain in another field at its side, he must make a separation the size of the area in which one can sow a quarter of a cub between the two. This is approximately 10 and 1 fifth cubits by 10 and 1 fifth by approximately 10 and 1 fifth cubits. This applies whether the space left empty ceases or creases in the midst of these fields or continues along their entire side. If there is less than this species between them, sowing these crops are forbidden, but he's not a he's not liable for lashes, unless they are six handbreadths or less close to each other. Halachatin. If his field was sown with vegetables and he desired to sow another species of vegetables, even squash, in another field at its side he must make a separation of a square six handbreadths by six handbreadths between the two where whether they the space left empty ceases in the midst of these fields or continues along their entire side. If there is less than this space between them, sowing these crops are forbidden, but he is not liable for lashes unless they are within a handbreadth of each other. Halakha 11. If there was grain sown in one of two fields and vegetables or squash sown in the other, one must make a separation the size of the area in which one can sow a quarter of a cup between the two. Halakha 12. When does the need to make a distinction of the size mentioned above apply? Between two fields. If, however, he had sowed vegetables in his field, and he desires to sow a row of another species of vegetables at their side, it is sufficient for him to leave a trench six handbreadths long with its width the same as its depth between the row and the field. Halacha 13. When a field is sown with grain and a person desires to sow a row of vegetables, even squash whose leaves are long and become tangled in its midst, he must leave a distance of six handbreadths between them. If the leaves of the squash became extended and entered into the portion where the grain was sown and became entangled with it, he should uproot enough of the grain in front of the squash so that the leaves will not become entangled. 
Needless to say, if you sowed one row of one species and another row of one species of another species, it is sufficient for there to be one trench between them, as will be explained. Halakha 14. If you made an appropriate separation between the two species, but one of the species became draped upon the other one, whether the grain became draped upon another upon other grain, a vegetable upon another vegetable, a vegetable upon a, upon grain, or grain upon a vegetable, everything is permitted, for you made a separation of the appropriate measure. There is one exception, Greek squash, because it becomes extended very far. Therefore it becomes draped upon another species, one should uproot the species in front of it, as explained in the previous halakha. Halakha 15. If between two species there were any of the following, a cistern, a ploughed field left fellow, a stone fence, a path, a wooden fence that is ten handbreadths high, a, a trench that is ten, brand, ten handbreadths deep and four handbreadths wide, a tree whose branches hang to the earth, or a rock that is ten handbreadths high and four handbreadths wide, it is permissible to place the one species on one side of the divider and the other species on the other side of the divider. Since one of the above is separating between them, they appear distinct from each other. Halakha 16. When is it necessary for there to be such a separation or a divider? When one is sowing the two species in his own field. If, however, one person sowed wheat in his field, his, co his colleague is permitted to sow barley in a bordering field, as implied by Leviticus 19.19. Do not sow mixed species in your field. The prohibition applies only to sowing mixed species in one's own field, for the Torah does not say mixed species shall not be sown on the earth. Moreover, even if one planted barley in his own field next to wheat and extended the barley until it was adjacent to the field of his colleague, which was planted with barley, it is permitted. The rationale is that the barley in his own field appears to be the end of his colleague's field. Halakha 17. If his field was planted with wheat and a colleague's field adjoining it was planted with wheat, he is permitted to sow one row of flax at the side of his wheat adjoining his colleague's field. The rationale is that an observer knows that it is not common practice to sow only one row of flax and this person is merely testing his field to see if it is fit to plant flax or not. Thus he is sowing the seed with the intent of destroying it. Therefore it is forbidden to sow another species between these two fields that are planted with one species until he makes a distinction between the two species within his own property. Halakha 18. When a person's field and a colleague's field were sown with two different species of two different types of grain, he should not sow even one row of mustard seed or safflower seed because it is customary to sow one row of these. If, however, there were two fields planted with different species of vegetables, it is permitted to sow mustard seed or safflower seed between them, for it is permitted to bring any species close to mustard seed or safflower seed with the exception of grain. There is a stringency in the latter instance because the mustard seed or safflower seed do not have a harmful effect on grain. Similarly, if a, if a corner of a portion of one's field sown with one species touches a block or the field of the field sown with another species, it is permitted because they appear separate from each other. Needless to say, if the corner of a portion of one's field sown with one species touches a corner of the field sown with another species, it is permitted without setting them apart, them apart or making a distinction, as we explained, because it appears that it is the end of one's field that touched the end of another field.